Let me be your salty dog I won't be your man at all And let me be your salty dog iRail Pro is a great practice app that allows you to practice both strumming and singing and also working on your solos. In this video we'll give you some time-saving tips as to how to go about creating your own chord charts. To begin creating your new chart you want to tap on the pencil, pick new song, and for now we'll just go ahead and create it. We can change the title and the composer later. At the bottom of the screen you have chord symbols. So I'm going to redo Salty Dog, so I'll put a G. And then to move that cursor, I've got to tap on the screen. And the next chord is E, then I've got two measures of A, and so on. But I have a problem. I don't have measures of music. So I'm going to go back here to this G. I could come down here to the bottom, right next to the next button, and tap this right-facing measure line. And then I've got my measures, but then I still have a problem because how many beats are these measures? They're supposed to be four beats. So if I come down here and start trying to space them out with the plus sign, things start moving around on me. So let's show you a much cleaner way to get an easygoing chart. Let's now create a chart for the song Old Joe Clark. Pick new song and the very last thing it says is template and before we left it blank but this time we'll tap on that and get these choices and the choice that allows me to make nice clean looking charts is actually this 48 measures right here so we tap on that old Joe Clark is in the key of A so we can go ahead and put in all this information at this time and we'll just want to set it to A and if you tap that medium swing, which is the default, you can scroll through your choices here, and we find one called Bluegrass. And now, as I tap to the right of New Song 1, I can delete that and type in Old Joe Clark. So Old Joe Clark is a traditional fiddle tune, and I will let that be known. And now we're good to go, so we'll create that and look at how the measures now are nice and evenly spaced. So I now will put in the chords for Old Joe Clark. And you just tap at the beginning of each measure. And when you get to this seventh measure, it's a split measure. The first chord is on beat one, the second chord is on beat three, and again that's why I like to use this spacing because you've got all four beats here. So here's beat three, and I will put my E chord and A. So there is the beginning part of the song in fiddle tunes, we call that part A. Then there's a second part called part B. In fiddle tunes, each section traditionally repeats. So you can tap on your cursor on the last beat of the eighth measure, come down to the very bottom of the screen next to the next button, and tap on that until your choice is the repeat sign. We would like to also label the various parts of this song. There will be two parts. The first part is simply part A. So go back to the very first measure and down at the bottom line, next to the first ending there, you see that highlighted A, shaded A. You tap on that, and you get these choices. What part of the song is it? Well, it is part A, so we'll just select that. And now it's time to create part B. Part B of Old Joe Clark is nearly identical to part A, so we can take advantage of the copy and paste features. First, you tap on the cursor there till you get this highlight feature then drag your finger all the way to the end of where you want to copy hit copy come down to the next eight measures again highlight 
and drag and then you have the choice to paste it. Well, we don't want two parts A, so we come back here. We're going to change this measure to B by tapping on the A down at the bottom that's highlighted and change it to B. So that's been changed, but the one measure, the fourth measure of the third line here, needs to be changed to G. So highlight the E. You don't want to tap on the G without deleting the E. Then you tap on the G. And all of this is going to be good. We still have our repeat, so each section of this song repeats. We have one problem. If we just repeat from here, it's going to go all the way back to the beginning. So we need to tap in the first measure of part B and use this left facing bar line. Tap on that until you find the repeat sign and then it's only going to repeat those measures. So we now have a complete chart for old Joe Clark. The only thing left to do is make this look a little nicer by deleting those empty measures. And you can do that by highlighting and cutting each time you highlight a couple lines. And eventually you get to the end. Chart looks great. Tap on done. You want to save it. And there's old Joe Clark ready to go. Here is a summary of the steps we just used to create a chart in a very quick manner. One last element about old Joe Clark, many guitar players and banjo players actually learn the song in the key of G and then play it with a capo. But to hear it in G if you aren't using a capo, that's a matter of once you're on the play screen, coming down to the lower right hand corner, tapping on the key and change it to G and it automatically is done for you. You don't have to create a new chart. Another trick that will save you a lot of time is once you realize two songs are very similar. You can take a song that's already in your database and duplicate it. So I'm going to take Roll in My Sweet Baby's Arms and we'll tap on the pencil. We have the duplicate option. And up here under information, I'm going to erase that title and put When the Saints Go Marching In. All of the rest of the information remains the same, so I'll tap on Done. And now the only difference between the Flat and Scruggs version of Rolling My Sweet Baby's Arms and When the Saints Go Marching In is right here on this last line, that D chord becomes a G chord. Again, I have to tap Delete before I can put G. And at that point, I am completely done. I've got a whole new chart for a new title that I want to practice. One thing that happens with a song like Saints Go Marching In is the melody begins on beat two. So when you hear the count in clicks, if you've only got four clicks, you're just going to hear the first one you'd have to start playing. So that's not really enough. So what you do is you come down here to this little mixer icon right below the beats per minute tap on that and where it says count in you'll see it's probably set at auto select two and you'll get two full measures of a count in one way to grow your music library quickly is to have other friends that have the program and they can share their charts with you and or you can send your charts to them. To do that, you come up here with the share icon and you'll choose share chord chart and you want it to be in the iReal Pro format and then however you're going to share it. In this case, I'll send it in an email, type in the email address and away we go. Hopefully you've found these few hints to be very helpful in helping you make your charts quicker so that you're up and practicing a lot sooner. Have fun and we'll catch you next time.